emails. Hello, Lindsay. We're delighted to have a guest subject matter expert. Hello. <laughs> and Chuck <laughs> is hanging in there with us today, so I'm sure he'll be re chiming in occasionally. We are ready to go whenever you're ready, Lindsay. All right. Well, everyone, welcome to Transactional Emails, or if it looks nice, they might read it. Uh, we all know that you know, we, we all get a lot of emails, and some of them look nicer than others. And, and for me, at least, I, I tend to refer back to those a little bit more. So if I can actually get stuff working on my side. I figured I would, I, you know, but before starting this, what exactly do we uh, consider transactional emails? So if you want to read through this lovely, you know, congressional actual law of what they are, they facilitate, complete, or confirm a commercial transaction, blah, blah, blah. Mostly, though, they get stuff done. That is the point of it. So anytime we're sending a confirmation or a reminder, we are doing something to make sure that folks are hooked and they know what is happening. So we have a lot of examples. We will not cover all of them today. But if we're looking at student manager examples, like I said, confirmations, an enrollment confirmation, maybe a refund or a credit, you've processed a payment, you might want someone to know that you did that. Course reminders, hey, don't forget you have class coming up next week. Or upcoming courses, we want you to know about these based on your interest in whatever. And rosters, we all know we can email instructor or rosters to our instructors, and there are some pretty fun ways to do that. Ace Web, welcome to the system, resetting passwords, share something with a friend. The possibilities are endless. I don't think we can cover them all today. I don't think anybody wants to attempt to do that. So we're just going to look at three kinds in Student Manager. We'll look at confirmations. We'll look at some of our financial options. And we will look at course reminders. So, Laurie, I believe you have a poll ready. Uh, just to kind of get a quick idea of how many of you have edited an email template in Student Manager. So here is our poll. Our answers to select from, and you only get to select one. Yes, it's pretty easy. Yes, with the help of my tech. No, I didn't know you could edit the emails, and no, it makes me nervous. When I was a user, I probably would have checked no, it makes me nervous for a while. Yeah. So don't be shy about that. <laughs> So we're just about evenly split then between it's easy and I didn't know you could edit them. We'll, we'll share our results here. Yeah. Get to see. Not too many people nervous. That's good. Okay. <laughs> we're all pros then, right? <laughs> yep, we're all going to help you with this one. Go ahead, Lindsay. All You're right. Back. All right. Let me... First up, where do our templates live? In Student Manager, Module, Catalog, Email Templates. This is the lovely screen that pops up by default. There are three sections to a template. First is your header. It says for you in our, our default one, this is the introduction. You can edit this, whatever kind of welcome or thing. Email body, this is where the magic happens, I think. This is what is actually filling in the message, things like names or locations, and the footer. Now we're in closing mode. So three basic parts. Down here at the bottom, you'll see double-click any of the sections to enlarge. If you are like me, the text sometimes seems kind of small. And once I get going, I can't really see everything. So just a quick double-click, and you get a larger window. So let's talk about the email body. There's a lot happening in it. Most importantly is syntax. Anything that's just text, um, hello, this is your name, needs to be in quotes. Then we have to join it with a plus sign. So when we start putting in our variables, like maybe a course name or something, and then there are line feeds. Instead of hitting enter, you have to put in this uh, CRLF or 2LF. And I'll show you an example of that in Student Manager here in a second. You can use anything from the course names or register tables. So name, address, course name, uh, any registration, UDFs if you have those, like you want them to know what their t-shirt size is, you can include that. 
We have a lot of really nice email variables that have already been pre-coded. We just have to plug those in. Report functions, if you're familiar with those, basically making things look uh, a little prettier. And conditional statements with a whole lot of things going on in there. Um, what that one, just to kind of give you the idea, is if there were additional fees on the registration, then it would actually put that on the confirmation and show you the fees. Otherwise, it's just going to leave it alone. We have all of the email body coding available if you would like to go through that in more detail. That is on our help guide. It is a great site. It is a great resource. So our registration confirmation. Have you personalized yours? So there were some responses, no, I didn't even know we could edit them. Here's the thing about that. You can edit, and I encourage you to do so, perhaps today when the webinar ends. I'm going to go ahead in here in Student Manager, and I'm going to click Find and Email. This is our default confirmation. When you send an email confirmation, this is what will go. So this is the introduction paragraph. You can edit this. That is what the student is going to see. So of course, also, to back up just a little bit, we know that we can send our registration confirmations from the registration screen, the green screen, or the payment screen. Normally, you process the payment, print receipt and close, you're done. And of course, that's the lovely screen we get beforehand. So we can send the standard email receipt. So here we go. This is the introduction paragraph. And if you notice on the left, there's the template. On the right is an actual email that I sent to myself so I could show you what it would look like. When the student gets it, that is what the student sees. This is the introduction paragraph. That, of course, is our header. All of this here is all in the email body. So all of the student name, dates, course name, all of that on the left begins to look like real, actual text. And finally, our closing mode. It's a good time for the thank yous, come again, all of that stuff. We want to make sure that that confirmation is useful. So making sure, you know, if, if you have multiple people, you're, you know, I've called to enroll myself and Laurie in a class. And the confirmation should include both of us, both names, the courses each of us is registered for, each is registered. That's already on the default for you. Location, dates and times. Uh, some of you, perhaps many of you, have special course comments, like maybe bring paper and pencil to the first class. And you put that in the comments section of a course record, which I'll pull up real fast so you know what I am uh, talking about over here, note may be printed on receipt. We can include that. It's often a very good thing to use. But besides being useful, it's nice when it's also snazzy. So this one that I'm showing you is actually an HTML confirmation. You can include an image. Oh, that's pretty. You can change font styles. You can also link to social media. Uh, if you have a departmental Facebook page, maybe a Twitter feed or something, you probably are trying to direct students there as well. Maybe they, you know, more announcements there. Hey, this just announced for tonight. It's, it's nice to give them those options. So let's see what I've got next. All right. So let's talk about how we would do this in the template. And if it all looks like too much, it's okay. This, going back, going back. The one that was make it snazzy. In your module catalog email template, it's one called confirm HTM. It does require some knowledge of HTML. Lucky for you, you can start with the default one that's in here, just the plain basics, and kind of, you know, <laughs> Go back and forth here. One important thing, and I think this is where I'm supposed to use the, uh, the highlighting tool. 
when you include, is it working for me or what here? I'll move it over Sorry, here. Sorry, guys. There you go. There we go. There you go. It took a minute. Where, this is where you're including an image. So where I had the image in the last email. Maybe I'll send it to myself again here in a second. I think you have to hit escape to get out of that mode. Try hitting escape. Okay. There or, you go. Wait. Normal non-drawing mode. There we go. It's a learning curve, apparently. This image, whatever you would want to include in your email as your, you know, your departmental logo, it has to live over in your ACE web folder. It's the only way it's going to be able to find it. So what I mean by that is, get down to the desktop, there's the cat, ACE images. As long as it is stored in here and you give it the right path, it will show in the email for you. Otherwise, you're going to get a broken image link. Then, ah, erase drawings. Down here, like I said, we could double click. Now it's a larger field, so we can see everything that's in here. What you will notice is this strong tag. This makes things bold. So we want the registrant the name of the student in bold. That way we know who we're looking at. Again, if there are three people on the one confirmation, it's nice to very quickly and easily see exactly whose information we're looking at at that time. So strong tags are your friend. What are some other good ones to point out in here for you? And you'll see those kind of along the way. So we would have a break and then over here our course, the same idea, we put it in bold. Down at the bottom is where you would put the, you know, like us on Facebook or join us. So, you know, it could be as simple as an image. Also, as an aside, if you have a departmental Facebook page, things like that, you will, um, you, you are probably all aware that you can They'll actually give you a little badge that you can link and share, so maybe it's already on your website, things like that you can put in this template. If you need help with the HTML, you're not sure what can go where, ask your tech, and your tech will help. Are there any questions at this point? I, I don't want to get too far in and have too many questions coming up. Don't have any at the moment, but if you want okay. to give just a moment for people to type uh, one I'm in, I'm going to jump in. Uh, am I am I am I on audio? Um, uh, excellent job, Lindsay. Question: Has anybody ever experimented with taking the HTML editor from the catalog side and being able to uh, create an HTML block for one of the header footers? Uh, mm -hmm. In an email, um, I didn't know whether we could kind of cheat or use the the WYSIWYG, um, you know, HTML for dummies out of the catalog builder uh, to put into the um, <clears throat> put into an ace, you know, into an email body template. Yeah, that's an awesome question, and that's a really good suggestion. And um, maybe that's something we could check on between now and next week when we do the yeah. the, the follow up on that. Well, and incidentally, have we have we reminded everybody that this that we are planning to do a follow-up session next week, and whether we cover new ground or we spend more time on examples <clears throat> at next week or at the, the follow-up webinar to this? I missed the first part of some of your discussion here. Yes, there was an email sent, and then okay. we'll also okay. thank, there's we'll that, that reminder, and then we'll remind the third time okay. at, uh, at All right. the end. I'm, I'm, I'll let you get back to the uh, yeah. any questions, Lori. So I think we're good. Okay. Well, so why don't I go ahead real fast. At what Chuck was asking with the, the HTML editor, so we have our email templates, but also under catalog we have our codes, right? You could, if you wanted, you know, maybe create kind of a placeholder catalog template, right? So we'll call it, for now, HTML test. And all I did was hit the add button down at the bottom. Hitting my tab key will get me into the name field test placeholder. Um, now, I would say this could work well in the 
email header and footer, but you could kind of go into, you hit your generate HTML, and you could probably edit your text. I hit the edit text button. Now, hey I, there. I think, you, mm -hmm. I think you, if you build the te if you type the text in the first part, and then when yeah. you hit edit, of course, it'll copy it down. But you should be able to fiddle from right here. Go for it. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, typing in there, hey, this is formatted. And I want to go ahead and make it bold. Um, formatted, I could change the color. Let's make it purple. I like purple. So once we do that, we could go ahead and just say done. Do you want to replace it? Sure. And there it is. So we have all of our HTML in here. Now, what you can do is copy that. So control C to copy. I'll go ahead and close it. So this is a good quick cheater's way around things. So if you're not quite sure about HTML, you can kind of go through here. I'm going to go down in the, uh, well, let's, um, let's put it up in the header. So I double clicked it to make things a little bigger. Let's not. It's going to be, let's go down here. Come on. So thanks for your interest in our program. That's where it starts. Just before that, I'm going to go ahead and, even before the break tag, Control-V, I'm going to paste in there what I just formatted over on the uh, catalog side. Okay, click Done, Save. I need to get my little email program up and ready to go so you can see what it looks like after I send it. So what I'll do, no. It's already open, apparently. That's cool. Is I'll go pull up a registration, and I'm going to print my receipt. Now, the confirm HTM template is a user-defined email receipt right now in, in my database. So I want to make sure here that I'm selecting user-defined. I hit OK, and there it is. I know that's the one I just entered. I can double-click, click, click hit, hit, hit Enter, whatever and then just send it. No, and we should find over here, not in that one apparently, new message. Somehow I've opened this twice, so that's always helpful. Here it is. Your confirmation, and there you go. Hey, this is formatted. So Chuck, that would work. I mean, if you, know, if you want to just sort of go in, do this, and then paste it over, that's absolutely an option. All right. So let's call that an end to the registration confirmations. Uh, we will actually talk on the third about some more really neat things you can do with this. Uh, as a teaser, you could add a map. If you have addresses for your course locations, you could put a map. You can embed it in the confirmation. You could even embed a little, little field to get directions straight to the class location from your email. That, I think, is a really neat feature. Coming soon in the next webinar. The next one is financial notices. Um, how many, just a sort of a show of hands, how many of you send like balance due or credit emails through student manager? Anyone? Of hands. <laughs> Click the little yellow hand on your Citrix toolbar, and I'm looking. You've got a few responses. All right. So maybe about a third. Okay. Good. Good. You can send these. Sort of easiest for me, I would say. You have other options, but you can send it straight from the registration screen. So let's say you, you know, somebody overpaid and called you, hey, I totally gave you too much money, but it's cool. Can you hang on to it? I'm going to take another class. Straight from the registration screen, you could issue a refund or whatever it is. Print the receipt. This time we'll select the user defined email receipt. Let me go back to my registration. Again, user defined. I hit OK. And there is one in here called credit notice. Very simple email. You probably want to change your subject, but our records show you have a credit with us. Again, this is just plain good old transactional email. It tells you all you need to know. You have a credit. You can use this. It expires a year. Again, that's sort of in the, the default set. 
you can change that if you have a different policy. You would change that in the email template. Send it, sure, no, great. So in case you want to see, I don't know if I actually have that one. Those are our options. That's the balance. So if you wanted to see just, again, the credit, very plain text, easy to follow, no big deal. The other fun one is a balance due. We like people to pay us. That's what keeps us running, right? So the same way, it's a user-defined receipt. Put a couple in here. Let's just look at the uh, you know, deadbeat second notice. Our records show that you have an outstanding balance. It's going to show you the amount due and the amount paid. Theoretically, this would be zero at this point. I don't know if I have one of those, but we'll go with that. So again, very basic message. Now, you could change things around in this one. If you are using, ACEWEB has an option for you to pay balances online. Pretty great option. You can send someone an email, you owe us money, go log into your account in ACEWEB and just pay us. So what we could do, and I've already created one, but we'll go look at it anyway. In here I created just a new template. Where is it? That one. Our records show you have a balance. So again, this one has HTML in it. You can format things a little better. Also, it will allow you just to click through. In this email body section, I added two things. One is this variable, eREC paid. What that is, and this is where I go over to my fantastic, wonderful help guide, email body coding. Down here, you get the list of available variables. Come on. The paid one gives you a payment date, a receipt number, and an amount. That might be something that you want to include in your, your regular confirmations. Sometimes people really need to know what was, you know, what date did I pay in case you're sending out a, a second confirmation or something, they can see that. You know, a receipt number. These are useful items to include. So I added that. And I also added this sentence, you may also pay your balance online at, and then that's where you would put the URL of your, your ACEWEB account status page. Accountstatus.awp is where you would go to make the payment. So I will click Done, and then I'm going to go to my registration, print receipt so we can see what it looks like. I'm going to use the HTM one. Also, when you're using an HTML formatted email, it can look a little messed up in the, in the send screen. You're just previewing what was in that template. So you're going to see the HTML tags. You will see all of this. That is OK. Do not be alarmed, because what will happen is after it is sent, the registrants email whatever provider, you know, Gmail, Yahoo, everything except AOL, because somehow people are still using AOL, it's going to render, it's going to format it in HTML. If it doesn't, it's because they have some setting to block it, and they'll call you and you'll just send them a plain one. But I'll go ahead and send this. No to conventional. Let's drag this back over here. Here it is. I didn't do too much of anything. Again, you could make it look really snazzy and change some colors. But the, the EREC paid, the receipt paid, you'll see here the date that it was paid, what the payment type was. So by check, here's my receipt number and the amount. And then I went ahead and made a second payment on this one. So you can see that it's going to list each one. And then you may also pay your balance online. I click that. Hopefully this is going to, yeah, it's going to work for me. This is sort of a random little program that lets you bypass actually needing an email server to send messages. So I think I can actually do everything in ACEWEB in here. It's kind of exciting. 
So I would just log in if I could type. It's hard to type when somebody's watching you. Sometimes it really is. And you can see here that apparently I've enrolled in a ton of stuff. Um, and you would just check your box, whatever you want to pay for, maybe all of them, maybe none of them, you just wanted to see. And then you'd you know, pay now, and from there we go through the whole payment process. Go to the service, whatever yours is, put in the information, ta-da, it's all paid. So that is a really fun little link you can put in those confirmations. Any questions? Uh, let us see. Okay. I think everything I have I'm going to hold till the very end. Okay. Well, let's uh, see what else I've got on here. Yep, making it snazzy, adding those in we talked about. Credits we talked about. Reminders. This is a whole giant field of options. Course reminders. Do we want a quick show of hands how many people are taking advantage of this feature to send a reminder to students before class start? Absolutely. All right. Please raise your hand by clicking on the little yellow fingers. Just click once, twice, lowers your hand, raises it, and then lowers it. So hold on. Be patient. Just click once. I think I used to click like three or four times because I'd be afraid that I, you know, raise my hand and never put it down from the last question. <laughs> a lot more people have edited their reminders than have edited their financial. Fantastic. Good. Good. So there are many ways to set course reminders. I'm going to show you this one basic way. In your preferences on the course tab, there is this great little preference here to send email reminders a certain number of days before the begin date. I don't know that you want to send yours 21 days before, but you might. It may just be three days, whatever it is. This is user specific. Uh, in a perfect world, you would only have one person sending reminders. Just one, no need for everyone to. But you, you may need to do that, and, and that's fine. So what happens, where do I go from here? OK, let's go back to Student Manager. Actually, let me close out of it. and I don't have to do that yet. Um, close, escape out of things. What would happen when you sign in? Only I'm just going to go to Email Student Reminders. Those are your two options. As soon as you sign in, if you have that preference checked, you will see this screen. And everything that is 21 days or whatever number of days you've set will show up here in this list for you. You can also, if you decided to ignore it, you were signing in and you were over everything and didn't really want to send reminders right then, maybe you want to send them at the end of the day, under Tools, Email Student Reminders. And of course, no reminders set 30 days out because I already sent one so I would have an example for you guys. So, hey, let's set it to 50. Why not, right? Just so we get something and you can see the process. There we go. These are all the courses that start in that, you know, specified number of days out. You do have the option. And again, this may work very well if, if more than one person needs to be sending reminders. You know, maybe the, the classes I oversee, I'm going to send them. But, you know, Laurie or Chuck, you, you oversee something else, so you're going to handle your reminders. You can just uncheck the boxes and decide which ones you want to send and which ones you don't. So I'm just going to select two of them. You hit Done. And then you get this screen. This is different, right? It's, it's still an email template. You're still doing, you know, you're still editing that in the same place. but. This is our email merge tool. And it works over in Reminders, and it works practically everywhere else. I mean, you can use this with instructors, registrations, names, all kinds of things. So we know that our reminder, that's the name of the reminder template. And again, very basic information in this default one that we provide you. Thanks for participating. You know, here's the course. Again, here's the location. So you can use this exactly the same way as you would use a registration confirmation. And it can contain all of the same information. You know, it, it doesn't have to be different. You might want it to be different. You, you probably want it to say, 
course reminder, you know, this is to remind you that's probably helpful. Again, in this one, you could put more location information. Maybe you've added a location and it was, you know, it, it wasn't there before. This is a great opportunity. Um, you could have in here attachments. Attachments are fantastic, especially probably those of you dealing with youth programs. You may need some kind of release form or liability. You can attach it to the reminder so that they're getting it right before class starts. There is no excuse. Please fill it out and send it with your child so that you have it. The other great thing about the reminders is you can also email the instructor because maybe they forgot to or maybe you just want them to be included. Email CO notify people. We know that that's the uh, sort of notify in the, the blind copy field. So if you're doing a contract course or something and the company that you're contracting with, they might want to know as well what's happening. Log the entry. So in case someone ever comes back and says, well, I didn't know that class was starting this day. Well, I did send you a reminder. CRM is a really great module. If you don't have it, talk to your tech about it and then you just fire away. Uh, now the other great thing about this when you get the, the merge option is maybe, again, I only selected a couple of courses. Maybe those were location specific or program specific to me. You don't have to use just that reminder email. Maybe you have one in here that's reminder, you know, youth reminder or something that contains completely different information. They may, may need to know well, they probably do, not even may, there's a lot more information that would have to go to them, you can create an entirely different template. I think that's about all I've got on uh, reminders. We talked about that. Yeah, and questions. And I feel like we covered quite a bit. Um, are there questions? Are there things that we want to see again? I have How are we doing? Can you add the course number to the subject line or the course title to the subject line of the email? Ah, yes, sort of. <laughs> there is an option, and this is set in um, a little program called X Set Mail. It's actually where you set up all of your email things. The course title and number. What it does is it pulls from the catalog code. So if that's something that you wanted to set up, you know, you, you would talk with your tech about changing the, the mail settings. But what will happen is the email that comes through, and I'm sort of going at this the entirely wrong way, is it would just give the name here. So intermediate crochet. So you can absolutely do that. Uh, some people just wanted to say registration confirmation because if you've enrolled in three classes, you're only going to get you know, the, the first one to show. So then if people don't read it, they don't realize my other two, you know, other two classes were in there. But if we make things uh, snazzier and bold and lines and colors, then you know, chances are better. Hopefully they'll, they'll read it. So that is an option for you, yes. Okay. What else? Can you import and export email templates? Yes. You can, and we have available on our site. I believe it is under resources. Chuck, stop me if I'm wrong. Somewhere in here. Yeah, we I'd have go for that. I'd, I'd go to the main site under um, student manager resources. Yeah. And over here under tools, you'll find all kinds of great things, not just email templates, but mapping and you know reports you'll find in here but new sorry no I, yeah I'm looking to see if we have report preview go let's look under that's what well, it downloads I thought we had a section also of the base uh, email templates because again yeah. if if you don't have them now you might show them where uh, if we don't have it on the website but if your tech were to send it to you you can import them directly into the cal into the catalog model from, I believe, import export on tools. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we do have here if you want to start with just blank. Oh, blank there it is, template, right there. Cat dot right there. Yeah. There it is. You no, can no, download no. that, and of course, mine is just gonna. So. All it is is a little table. So if you want to start with a, an empty set and sort of. 
go about changing them completely, newcat.zip is here for you. Uh, what would happen is you would save that, you know, unzip the con contents in your student manager folder. Back here we can go to tools, import, export, email, template, import. And I'll go ahead and do that. And it's probably going to tell me, I think I still have it in here, new cat. So wherever you save it is where you would navigate to find it. And you'd, okay. point to, you'd point to the DBF. There'll be two files, a DBF and FPT. You'll point to the one with DBF next to it. Yes. And there you go. And once it's done, it will tell you that it's finished. In my case, no new ones were added because I only have the newest set. So if there are newer ones, they will be added. Also, Chuck mentioned if your tech just sends you one template, It'll be the same idea. You'll get that file. It'll, you'll get a DBF and an FPT. You'll save them both. When you import, you'll find just the DBF and, and import it. And that's that. What else? Uh, do you recommend putting any kind of marketing information in an email? Yes. Uh, that is, you know, cross cross market, send them, you're enrolled in this, but you might like this. That's a great thing to do, and that was actually something I was going to hold off on showing until the next webinar, but you can we'll do this. We'll hold on for it. We'll hold oh, on well. That works, that works. Okay, well, we'll, we'll hold on, and if we, if we don't have too many questions and we still have time, maybe I'll loop back around to that. But the, uh, the hint here is a report function an email function, again, our help guide, all of our functions, to show up class. So upcoming classes on your receipt. So if you want to play with that on your own, or if we have some more time, we'll come back to it. Okay. All right, what else? Um, the opening and closing HTML tags, do they have to be in each section, or just at the top of the first section and at the bottom of the third section? Just the top of the first and the bottom of the third. So you'll put the, because it, it, it will read it all as HTML. So just in the header, you'll put the opening HTML, body tags, whatever. Leave this alone. You don't need the HTML or body in there. And then down here, you'll close it out in the footer. So that was a good question. Uh, how do you set an email template as the default? That's a good question. My practice, and Chuck, you may have to correct me. I could be wrong. This email is the, the standard email receipt. What I would recommend, copy the contents out of this default one. Save it as a new one, like, you know, default or something, just so you have a backup. And say you wanted to just go straight to the HTML one. Personally, I would just copy and paste over into that one. That's, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, I'm not sure there is a mechanism. I think it is by the, by the default name of the, um, by the default name of the receipt, which is just, um, uh, yeah, E underscore mail is the default one that it is setting on. So, um, trying to think, well, you could just rename, I suppose, uh, what, you could do the same thing, Lindsay, by just renaming yeah. this one to email to, also and then that. just renaming the one that is HTML to E underscore mail, and that should make it. We'll confirm that between now and yeah. next week. Uh, although you could experiment right now, Lindsay, just take that mm -hmm. call it email oh, yeah. to, because that shouldn't uh, make any difference. Save it, and then um, and that's fine. And then we go find we'll a different that one. one. To the E underscore mail will use the HTML. And just E underscore yeah. mail, and then go back and hit default and see if that jumps to this one because I yeah. believe that, that that should accommodate the same without having to do as much uh, copying and paste in there. Yeah, even easier than <laughs> all the okay. copying. Okay, so uh, do standard. default, hit OK, yeah. and yeah, that's bada bing. Yeah, so just that's rename it. Rename yeah, just rename it. So it. Yeah, cool. Not and quite yeah. as much. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, fiddling, but not too bad. Yeah, <laughs> not too bad at all based on what I was no. recommending. <laughs> so that's how you uh, that's how you set your default. We learned something today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you miss the reminder 21 days out, will it remind you the next day? It will not. Well, 
No. Well, if you don't clear it. Right. If you don't clear it, it, it will. It'll stay. It'll stay on until you either clear it or you send it. Yeah. Because on the demos, Lindsay, I I never send mine, and and I have uh, reminders that go back till. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't say clear the reminder, well, go back and show them on that. Uh, we can um, get out, get out, get out. Okay. Oh, you want me to? Okay. Yeah, just go in. You don't have to log all the way out. Oh, look, well, that's what I thought you, you were. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I was going to oh, well. get the. We'll get there eventually. We got a minute or two. There's Lucy. Back in. Yeah, there's Lucy hanging out. Yeah, actually, this is. If you clear the flag, you won't see it. But yeah, I started getting a giant list of right now. I see, like right here, if if, if you wanted to uncheck, um, well, if you wanted to say I'm just going to skip this, you can just yeah. click, you can click, click cancel, cancel, answer no to clear, and they'll stay there until you either send them or clear them. Yeah. So yeah, you can um, you can decide when and how you want to do that. So. Okay. Right. Um, one of the things I was going to offer, uh, uh, since Lindsay's doing this, I've been enjoying this and doing all the work, I would suggest that if you've got an example of a transactional email that you would like to send that don't know how or haven't figured out how to do it, send an email to uh, Lori or I or Lindsay if you've got Lindsay's email. And we'll put it in as one of perhaps one of the, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, examples for the next Case time. studies, yeah. A case study that we could work through uh, for next, uh, the next webinar, the, the, the two, weeks, two weeks from today. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That would yep. be really great. Yeah, that'd be well, great. Give us some that examples. You or, that you want to share, you know, send that yeah, Absolutely, yeah. If you've got one that you like, uh, send it to us, uh, export the, uh, uh, the email or um, send us your whole catalog table and we can peel out the email you want. I don't think we have an easy way to export an, in, export an individual I don't uh, think we do. catalog template. Uh, but yeah. if you've got one, um, actually we can do it, Lindsay, through the magic box, but that's a little bit of extra work. But, uh, or just we'll, copy and paste the contents into an email. Uh, you could do that. Copy and paste the the, bot, the content of the three different sections of your email into an email uh, text, and then we can reconstruct it and be able to show it to people next week. So yeah. we're in a couple of weeks. So we're happy to to brag on what you guys are doing. So, Lori, how's the uh, getting any more buzz in there? Uh, this has been wonderful. I I learned lots of stuff. I don't get into <laughs> email as much, so this has been great. Great for me. I might be able to be a helpful tech at some point. So whoa. <laughs> don't overreach Last is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, wow, that's like, that's that's serious there. <laughs> Lori, Last how are we doing? Otherwise, I think we're about done. Last I think, call and when we're set, we're set, I think. All right. Good enough. People saying they're excited about being able to add images and they're excited to be able to edit now. Cool. We're going to go out and cool. experiment and that's, that's Absolutely. That's idea. what it's for. That's okay. what it's for. Yeah. Well, we can, All right. we can leave it there and tackle everything else. And you again, um, you're, you're invited as, as participants today, again, that if you've got an example of an email and, and you don't have to be terribly precise, you can do kind of storyboard uh, question, you know. I wish I could send an email that did this, that, and thus and uh, send it off to us. And, of course, if you've got an actual email that maybe you're writing an Outlook, and you're hand typing this email every time to some process of what you're doing with students, send us a copy of that email you are laboriously doing one at a time, and Lindsay will show you how you can make it happen once and done, and you're, you've got it in the, in the bag. So yeah. again, you will, you will be sending Lindy, Lindsay stuffed hams and turkeys and, and mm. you know, Christmas goodies here, but, or holiday goodies before you're done. I'll take so. the Christmas I, I, I caught that, so. <laughs> I'll take the Christmas or the Hanukkah, just send the you, food. Christmas or Hanukkah, just send food, uh, you know, it's equal opportunity, so. Uh, <laughs> All right, Lori, well, one thing, sorry. Go for it, go for it. Oh, I was going to say just one more kind of, if you have students who are asking for transcripts, we do have a template for that so that you don't have to continually print and mail and scan and copy. Are you going to cover, are you gonna cover uh, templates 
that, that transcription. I mean, input. I figured I'd just show it real fast. I yeah, mean, go, know, we got a minute here. Let's, you know, let's, if, let's show it. If this is the time of year that people are saying, hey, can I get a transcript? If you, you know, again, from the, the registration screen, like I just need to see a transcript from this one course that I took. You can hit OK with a user defined. We have one in here. We've got a transcript and an HTML format. And, you know, here you go. Here's your official transcript, ID, course, grade, credits. And, of course, with HTML and all of that, you could theoretically put in, you know, whatever letterhead you have. You could put the image in there. You could format all kinds of stuff. And so it just goes in the same format as you normally send them. So great. something to think about. <laughs> Great, great. I, again, yeah. I'll, I think that's a lot of times people people want that. So yeah, yeah. Super, super. Very good, guys. Cool. I think Lindsay did good. Uh, raise your hand if you think she did good. And um, we all hands. Shoot, we all expect <laughs> lots of hands up. And again, uh, you all have a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Drive safe. Uh, look out for turkeys. And um, we will see you the first week of December. All right. All righty. Thanks, guys. Same. Take Fine. care, everyone. Same, Same login. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.